Hello everyone, and hello YouTube. Uh, we are currently coming up to the winter convergence, so I hope everyone is having a great set of holidays. You may be watching this over the holidays to see what happened, but I'm going to keep this short. We're going to be talking about the patch. The patch that's coming up uh, for the winter convergence festival. Now people are going to beat the beat a dead horse with this. Everyone's going to have made a video on this so i just want to go over the things i thought were important that i think are kind of game changing to what's going on first let's pull up the, the forums we can see here that this is the december update that we're getting here soon it's coming out the 16th uh it will be here on the 16th of december the winter convergence is starting there are going to be aesthetics across all of eternum that are going to change the layout on top of that, there's going to be new quests. There's going to be new uh, items for you to use. This is going to be a once a year thing. However, the some of the stuff that's added is going to stay here. Um, this is going to be from December 16th to January 11th. One of the things that are going to stay here even after, ice caves are appearing all over Eternum due to the Winter Warrior's desire for forever winter. The rest of Eternum will look like these ice caves if the onslaught of the warrior is not stopped. These caves will remain behind after the event as scars on the land, sources of wintry magic that refuse to melt even if the warrior's defeated. So we're going to have a new set of content here, essentially even after the winter festival, and we're going to be able to keep it. We're going to be getting into the end game update. This is the big meat of what's going on because a lot of people are thinking about what's happening to the watermark system. It is true. They're renaming it to expertise and your expertise will now be displayed in a UI. You will be able to see what each expertise level you are at for your pieces of gear and your weapons. An average expertise value is shown above average gear score on the inventory character model. And every time you level up, you will get a banner that says you increase your expertise. Krasma. I know, Krasma being funny over here. They added a new item called Gypsum that you can get and you can acquire them each day by doing activities in the game. These are defeating open world name bosses, final bosses in uh, the two expeditions, outpost rush, trade skills, arenas, breaches. If you craft a potion at a camp and kill something over level 55 and only during major events like the Winter Convergence Festival, these gypsum orbs can be turned into casts of any weapon, armor, or trinket type. Opening a cast will guarantee an expertise bump and gear of that type. So pretty good. They're giving us a guaranteed way that we can control every day how we get a watermark or expertise bump. That's what that's saying. We can now control it. How you make these, they uh, introduced a kiln station. This is how you will craft your gypsum orbs. Now, what they did do in return, they tuned down the amount of expertise bumps you can get from drops and they slightly reduced the uh, chance you get from chests and open world bosses. On top of that though, expedition bosses remain the same. The uh, range that you can get an expertise bump has increased. So this is a wider range of potential bump. Instead of saying like you can only get three above your per previous, now it's like you can get up to five, right? So you have bigger bumps. They fixed all the chests in Lazarus and Garden of Genesis, so they have a chance to provide end game expertise bumps. In addition to gypsum drops, each expedition boss will guarantee a random expertise bump. Arena bosses also guarantee a bump. This is why doing arenas and expertise, uh, or sorry, Arenas and expeditions are going to be very important. They also are introducing time shards. This is going to give crafters the ability to choose a stat and a perk on a piece of armor. So that's pretty cool. Now that's giving us more control over crafted gear. Malevolence and Imperial Palace in North Dynasty. They are now level 66 content and have elite eight elite chests that can provide endgame expertise bonuses. Corrupted Beaches endgame have been increased to level 66. They tuned down some of the bosses saying that they were overtuned from last uh, patch. That's all from that. That's all really important. They added new perks into the game. I think this was uh, slightly important. Some of these are harvesting speeds. Another set of these is uh, plaguing strikes. A lot of people have made a comments that there's no way to reduce the healing a healer could do. This 
the only way I, I believe was infected throw from the hatchet and it was kind of dog water. So this is what their solution is. They're going to create a perk that lowers healing and gives disease. That nerf the healers in uh in PVP. So good luck healers. You got a new perk to deal with. They added another uh perk that only is for melee weapons but allows you to do more damage to targets with grit. But they also were like, hey, we're also going to give you a perk that if you have grit, you're going to do more damage. So, take that with you, Will. And I would look at the rest of these. Increasing damage. Pause the video. I think these are really important, but these are some of the perks that are being added. I'm trying to do it fast, Vic. I'm trying to do zip zip. People are going to have like a 23 minute video on this. I want a 5 minute video. Moving into weapons, nothing has uh, changed that much, but I will say there are things that have changed. One of these, the heavy attack for the rapier, has a slightly reduced recovery time. I think that's something really important that we will notice. On the hammer, Path of Destiny's stagger effect that you get from the first perk, it no longer stuns the target for one second. Now, it is uh, 0.33 seconds. Now, this is still essentially a stun. If people are doing something, it will stun them out of it. So it's like an interrupt. That's what I used it for as a tank, as a Warhammer user. So I don't know if this will affect me that much, but I bet it could. I will see the effects, and maybe I'll change up my build after this. But Warhammer is getting a nerf. They re reduced on the hatchet the recovery time uh, for a heavy attack, which seems to be a common occurrence that they've used throughout all of this. They fixed a lot of issues. The musket would reload slower when stamina was depleted. And the big one for musket fixed an issue that caused musket charge shots to not be expended while firing from the crouch position. So y'all exploiters. Ooh, y'all got hit. Ice Gauntlet, really the only thing I think is a big difference is Ice Tomb got rebuffed to 75% of the caster's health. And the Entomb Burst uh, reduced the mana cost a little bit more. Sword and shield for us tanks. Our recovery time for heavy attacks got reduced. I don't know what that... I'm pretty sure that's a good thing. Unless I'm thinking of that in the reverse when that's actually a bad thing. We're going to find that out. I don't know yet. The big one. Great axe got gutted. That's going to be the thumbnail. <laughs> it didn't get gutted. Reap's damage of the initial pull got reduced by about 40% weapon damage. Bloodlust, the haste bonus, the movement speed, chasing after people. You're still faster, but you're not as fast. Only 20%. Your base crit damage got nerfed overall by 10%. This kind of hurts. The homing range detection from your great axe got reduced for your lights and non-fully charged heavies. So you aren't going to notice the little bit of a leap towards your target anymore. It's going to be a little less. So best of luck. Void Gauntlet. Reduce the max per percentage it could scale up from 50% to 30%. Yeah, because Void Gauntlet did a lot of damage for the Ruid's Scream. For the Spear, I feel like the Spear keeps getting stronger and stronger. The Spear is eventually going to be pretty go-to. Increase the hit shape and size and attack homing on all thrust attacks. Your skewer is an increased distance of a lunge by 50%. Uh, perforate increases the rotation speed during the ability. So yeah, try out the spear. It keeps getting better. I think this is a very important thing because whenever I'm doing portals, these suck. Slicers got adjusted. Instead, they now uh, only spawn one slicer every 10 seconds instead of every five seconds. However, they increase the duration to double the amount. So I don't know if this is really going to help, but hopefully it does. Trade skills. Trade skills went through a big change, but I will say it's not that hard to understand. When you reach 200 in a trade skill, you will get a little wheel. You will get a progression bar with three points that shows you that you can still gain XP when you craft. When you hit those points, you will then get gifted tainer of useful items that are mostly trade skill relevant such as craft mods special ingredients and even schematics and recipes each subsequent marker awards a more spectacular container with more rewards than the one before gaining enough xp to go all the way around the circle will increment the aptitude counter by one so you'll be able to see on your counter how many times you've actually gotten this wheel to go on a full circle pretty cool they also added equipment patterns, are crafting artifacts that enable you to craft a guaranteed gear score 600 item that has a specific appearance. 
Patterns require a significant amount of powerful crafting uh, resources to create, but guarantee a 600 gear score item. Patterns still roll perks, and players have the normal amount of control over the outcome with craft mods and Azoth. I'd still like a trans mod, personally. Refining, the big thing, why everything went up in price. You can now refine 250 of a tier five raw source into one legendary material. For instance, you can convert 250 Ori ore into one Tolvium. Ori ingots can now be crafted with platinum. One thing they said in this, I want to just bring up real quick, more feminine armor appearances have been added to the game as world drops, but they didn't tell us what they were. We removed corrupted shards and lodestone as an ingredient to craft arena keys and added five runestone. We did this to make arena keys not compete for the same resources as expedition keys, but they still do. Re runestones are still used in it. Lodestone, you don't want us to use lodestone, so you want us to use the things lodestone to make rune stones to make arena keys like what <laughs> okay whatever you still have a one week cooldown on your orb creation so good luck there is one thing i'm missing where is it it's the uh opr opr here it is one thing about o outpost rush just to end this off really quick the initial spawn areas now have barriers preventing enemies from entering so no more spawn camping on top of that, you have the Winter Convergence Festival. I don't want to give too much away about what you're going to be doing during the Winter Convergence Festival, but I will say this. It's going to be fun. You're going to be able to get presents. You're going to be able to try out new events, and I hope you enjoy it. I don't want to give too much away. The event is for you to experience. That's all I really have to talk about. Peace out, YouTube. May the spark guide you. There, I got that done.